exercise your bitch, man. So you want to go in the room all the way in. think I'm scared right now, but I'm not. No, I'm just a little concerned that I don't have the right stuff. Do you have, like, a loaded gun? Hmm? Hello everyone, I am Dr. Anne and this is the Health Hub. So if it's your first time, welcome. Um, I hope you do join the family. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. And if it's the second time, thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. Let me just get to the video for today. So today I'll be talking about um, death in general. I just want to break down the video into three parts. Basically, I'll start with doctor's experience of death, first and foremost in medical school, um, and um, which is basically the theoretical death that happens when you're first exposed to cadavers. I will then move on to the second part, which will be the part where I just literally this fire. So thereafter, I will move on to the second bit where I discuss death, basically the practical, the first practical death, which one of us or most of us are likely to experience during internship. And um, the third bit, just death as a doctor who then now has responsibilities because as an intern, it's not really your fault. It's not like you're still a junior doctor, but then when you're a medical officer, things become a little, a little real. So yeah, I will um, start with the first part and I hope you stay along, like keep on watching, move on from the first to the second to third, but I've had a lot of people ask me about this experience, whether they're in the medical field or not. This is still something that's quite interesting that a lot of people tend to ask people who are doing medicine or are in the medical or health sector field, like their experience of this. So it's not only relevant to people in the health sector uh, or in medical school, but also relevant to people who are just like interested to find out like how it feels or how the whole thing is in general. So let me start with the first bit which is what happens in medical school. So basically when we joined medicine I did not know about this. I had no knowledge of this. <laughs> I had no knowledge of this and um, I unfortunately only found out when I was already in the field that we'll be dealing with dead people. Most or if not the only reason why I joined medicine was to heal people and sort of prevent death. So as doctors we tend to take that responsibility of having the opportunity to save lives um, upon ourselves. What happens is that in second year of medical school, this happens across like most medical schools, that during there's a subject or there's a subject that we do and it's called anatomy. And basically in anatomy, it involves basically the anatomy of the human body. You learn about, you know, body structures, what joints are called, different bones, um, you know, ligaments, vessels and whatnot. And part of anatomy, um, we have to, in second year, we meet our cadavers, basically. So Medical students in second year are divided into different groups of maybe five, sometimes seven. And um, we are meant to share this cadaver. You are given that cadaver for like the whole year and work on that cadaver throughout. A cadaver is someone who basically passed away and, and then um, dedicated their body for medical research and use. Um, instead of them being buried, they sign like papers and stuff to which basically stipulate which basically stipulate that they dedicate their bodies for medical use and research um, this then means that they are sent to mortuaries and universities where they are kept and put in formalin so that they don't like rot to keep the bodies fresh and basically these bodies are then given to medical students so basically i also heard that cadavers are also people who hadn't been claimed for a long time who are in the system i don't know how true that is but i also heard that some of the bodies that are used um so some of the bodies that are you know used are also bodies of people that um that weren't claimed for a certain number of years and had been sitting in mortuaries with you know and had been sitting in mortuaries non-identified or without any relatives picking them up. But I stand to be corrected. If you know any information regarding this, make sure you comment down below because I don't know, rumor has it that it's literally bodies that haven't been picked up. I don't know, I stand to be corrected. So yeah, what happens is that basically, um, thank goodness for them, um, the people who donate um, their bodies for us to practice on. So in second year, we put in groups and Basically, when you're going through anatomy and the different body structures, let's say upper limb, then you will dissect the upper limb. So you literally, you know, cut through it, see what the hand looks like, and the, like the true real like anatomy, basically. So how the hand actually looks like, how the ligaments look like, how the arteries look like. So you're able to literally see everything and you dissect the whole human body in essence. That is, you know, our first exposure to someone who is not living or someone who has died. 
And I can say my first experience, I was literally, I, I didn't, I hadn't heard anyone who spoke about this. So the whole thing was really, it was really shocking to me because I hadn't experienced, um, you know, I hadn't touched a dead person before and I didn't really know what to expect. And as black people, we have, you know, cultural implications of, you know, dead people in general, like that they meant to be respected. And there's all things that are like creepy stories, basically, if you're African, you know, um, that sort of, you know, can give you the creeps or whatever. But after the first, second and third time, most of us, you know, get used to it. You will get used to it. Um, no one really is scared or whatever. I think you get to a point where you're just like, okay, this is in as much as we have to respect this body because it's a human body. You get to a point where you're sort of like at peace with it that, or you, it's sort of like normal and it's not freaky or anything. You don't even think about it. Like even cutting through, dis even dissecting through it. Like it literally, I don't know, like... It literally becomes easier every time. So basically, it's not creepy. You don't dream about your cadaver, no. Like, it's not even that, like, traumatizing. Like, basically, it's not... It gets, like I said, it gets to a point where it's just, like, educational. In order for you to get to a point where it's actually normal, you have to sort of, like, detach from the fact that, okay, this is actually someone who lived and um, someone who was someone's family member, someone who was someone's mother, someone's father. So otherwise, if you think too much about that, guys, you will be depressed. And I feel like that's the, that's the gist of medicine. Like you can't, you can't, I know it sounds really bad, but you can't, you can't really like look at every situation and take it to heart and personally like that. Otherwise you will fall into a deep hole and literally sink in it. So in most situations, in order for you to deal with life and with all of the things that you'll have to go through, you sort of have to like detach. This is work. Yes, this person dedicated their lives for medical research for us to, you know, know and get better and get a better understanding of the human body. But in as much as that is the case, um, in as much as that is the case, that's where it ends. Like you are grateful and you do the work that you're supposed to do and you just have to not overthink it. Thank goodness, because it actually helped in terms of putting the whole instead of in, in terms of making you know medicine more practical because sometimes you see the book and you see arteries and you see nerves but after you see a cadaver you literally like i know in a human body this is where this part is this is where this vein runs and cutting through it and seeing okay this is where it actually is like it's just incredible it's just it's just incredible but yeah um it's fun it's enjoy it if you're a medical student and you're about to do it or your first year and obviously you do it in second year then um, it's something to look forward to. It sort of puts, that's the first experience of practical medicine, basically, because in most universities at that point in time, you're not really seeing patients. You're not really like exposed to the clinical part of medicine. So the only thing that sort of puts medicine to a more practical form, going from first year where you're doing things like physics and whatnot, that is it. Anatomy is it. And if you're a medical student, get in tune with a cadaver, learn to identify the parts, you know, so that you're able to spot it because literally they'll cut out a piece of a bone and put it there and be like, what bone is this? Like you have to be able to identify it outside of the actual body. So, um, yeah, I hope um, for the students or for the people who always wondered, um, our first practice at, you know, an, at an encounter with a human being is basically a lifeless human, which is in the form of a cadaver. Mm. And do link down for me your first experience of cadavers. Um, if you're a second year, first year medical students, like how does it feel? Are you excited? Or have you been exposed to cadavers as of yet? Is it something that you are looking forward to? If you haven't been exposed to that or you're not in the medical field to begin with, like, do you find us creepy? Uh, do you find us creepy? Are we, are we bad for like doing that to a human body? I'm sorry, <laughs> not bad. Are we bad for doing that to a human body? But we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. We have to learn somewhere. And unfortunately, that is the reality of the situation. So yeah, do link down below, comment. Um, yeah, comment your experiences or things you've heard. If you know anything, if you know anything regarding where they get their bodies besides besides someone having to sign up do tell me is it a rumor is it true that they actually use bodies that haven't been claimed for like 20 years do link down below um yeah and i will catch you on the second part of this series make sure you like you comment and you subscribe and i appreciate you for watching thank you